what was um, President Trump's reaction when, I guess, this cadre of advisors would say you lost? It was like, uh, well, they would say that and then they'd walk out and he'd go, see, this is what I deal with all the time. Former Trump attorney Sidney Powell is one of the four former defendants in the Georgia RICO case who have already plead, pleaded guilty and who spoke to prosecutors as part of their plea agreements. The Washington Post obtained tapes of all four, including attorney Kenneth Chesbro, and reports that his statement to prosecutors could provide evidence that Trump was aware of the fake elector plan. Chesbro disclosed that he previously unreported White House meeting. He briefed Trump on election challenges in Arizona and summarized a memo in which he offered advice on assembling alternate slates of electors, key battlegrounds to cast ballots for Trump despite Biden's victories in those states. Joining me now is MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin. Let's start on that because as someone who has spent a lot of time on the facts around January 6th, lead up to it, the coup, I think, and I might be wrong because it's enormous amount of information, we have never had Chesbro in the room with Donald Trump no, directly no. telling him anything until that. That's correct. And that, for me, was the biggest revelation of all of this, yeah. that Chesbro was in the room with Trump. The date of the meeting is, of course, two days after all of the electors, fake and otherwise, are convening. So that work is already behind Chesbro at that point. He's already directed everything from the press releases to the forms that these fake electors are supposed to sign to each of the different states. But the other thing I found so interesting was not only was he in the room with Trump, but when asked who he coordinated his activities with, who is the person he said he communicated with the most? It's not Rudy, it's not John Eastman, it's Boris. Right? And you and I have talked many times about the fact that Boris has really escaped being a central figure here. He's not charged in the Fulton County indictment. He is allegedly one of the co-conspirators in the D.C. federal election interference case, but reported only by The New York Times yeah, and even unconfirmed. Not, not, yes, right. Unconfirmed by NBC News and right. any other outlet, as far as I know. Right. So Chesbro is basically putting Boris at the center, right, as the connective tissue between the functionaries who are carrying out the fake elector plot and Trump is also a really interesting feature of the proffer that he gave to Fulton County investigators. And this is, of course, Boris Epstein, who is a, who, 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 I guess, a, technically is an attorney, right? He's a lawyer. He's technically an attorney. He's <laughs> apparently know. functioning as sort of a coordinating counsel. Yes, and when asked about who's quarterbacking this, uh, Chesbro said, oh, that was, that was Boris, which was That's interesting. Right. Jenna Ellis also, I mean, nothing quite new there, although I, I think it, probably helps in pushing back on advice of counsel defense, maybe? Yeah, I think it, well, to what extent Jenna Ellis said those counsel. things right. that she said to Scavino to Trump, I think is still remains to be seen. However, the other thing that really struck me about that conversation that Jenna Ellis says took place on December 19th. He's not leaving. That he's not leaving and that the we, in terms of the people backing up the boss, included not only Scavino, but Meadows. That was the, the tail end of that Key. statement. Yep. Right. But the other thing that strikes me about it is Jenna Ellis's behavior after that date, as evidenced by her own tweets, is not reflective of a person who thought that Trump should leave office gracefully. Rather, she's urging people and urging Donald Trump himself not to concede the election. Right. On December 28th, she's putting December pressure. December 28, 2020, President Trump should never concede the election. January 5th, one day before the 6th, more than 100 state legislators asked Pence to delay certification electoral votes. Right. So if this is the same Jenna Ellis who allegedly told Dan Scavino, what do you mean he's not leaving? That's not the way it's supposed to work. That's not the way loyal Jenna Ellis was behaving in public as evidenced yeah. by her social media posts. And finally, in terms of, I mean, it was it was wild to get these videos. I don't think anyone was expecting it. Clearly, Fannie Will is not happy. No. Protective order. There's an addendum to it in the end, which seems to flag exactly where they came from. Yes. And, you know, Harrison Floyd's lawyers taking responsibility in an email responding to Steve Sato, the former president's lawyer, asked, basically saying everybody should tell us on the record whether they did this or not. It didn't come from us. We're concerned about it. DA's office says definitely didn't come from us. And then Harrison Floyd's lawyer, <laughs> it came from Harrison Floyd's team. 
and now they're claiming it's a typo. I'm not really sure, but why Harrison Floyd benefits from this, not clear to me. He's an agent of chaos. We should stay focused on him. Um, he was the uh, PR rep who was involved in one of the more bizarre subplots in all this, which was the menacing emissary sent to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss to try to convince them to lie about their involvement and cop to some big election stealing threat in, in a police officers in, in, in a police precinct down in Georgia. Truly a bizarre part of this. And but tragic. He, right? Bizarre and tragic. And he's also one of the indicted uh, co-defendants here. Lisa Rubin, as always, a pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. having me.